and sisters, I want to show you what Satan wants to destroy, what he is doing right now, right, right now as we talk. He wants your soul, is gambling for your soul, all right? Now, look at this, look at this. I want to show you where exactly the soul is, where exactly the soul is. I know some of you might say, oh, this is not true or maybe, but this message is going to tell. You're going to understand what I'm talking about. Now, let's go to Leviticus 17 verse 11. Look at this. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul's for it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Now, there are key things here that you need to understand. Look at the word soul and blood in the same sentence. Does that make some sense to you? The blood atones for the soul? Could it, this be the reason why we are always told, do not eat blood? Could the blood be in the soul now think about this i want you to look at this in the book of genesis chapter 4 and uh, verse 10 do you remember this i want to show you where the where the soul is it says and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground this is the time when Cain has just killed Abel. And God is saying, the voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. Is it the blood which is crying? Or is it the soul which is crying? The soul which is crying. You see, the soul is a, is a copyright of you. It is basically you. In eternal form. The soul never dies. But where is, where is the soul exactly? The voice of thy bl brother's blood. Cries unto me from the ground. Now look at this. In the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews. Uh, where is Hebrews? Hebrews. Yes here. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Um, verse 24. Look at this. Look at this. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. The blood of Jesus speaks better things. Could the Bible be telling us something that the soul is in the blood and that's where eternity is, your eternal presence is? Are you getting the point here? Now, let's look at the banger. All right? Let me let me let me mess up your mind here, Beta. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter uh, 53. Isaiah 53, and from verse around 10. Let's start from 10. Okay. Look at this. This is talking about Jesus. Okay. The Bible says. Uh, oh, just cancel these notifications. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an, an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Have you have you heard that sentence? He he has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Is it the soul which was being offered for our sins or is it the blood of Jesus? Or does it mean that the soul is in the blood? Look at verse 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Uh -huh. 
Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. Did Jesus pour out his soul or his blood? Or does it mean that the soul is in the blood? And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? The soul was poured for our sins, meaning the soul may be in the blood. The soul may be in the blood. Now, do you understand something? When uh, Adam and Eve, something very funny, when Adam was created and then God later created Eve and presented Eve to Adam, what did Adam say? This is the flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. He did not mention blood at that time. Could it be because blood was not yet there? It was a water circulatory system or something like that? Because I believe one thing. That you see, the water, in the water is where we have the both... Uh, we have oxygen inside in the water and that oxygen is the is what we can call the breath that's why if you if you put some f fish in a water and then you 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 lock it firmly tight on a can that that fish is going to die why because there's no oxygen because that water has to have oxygen to live and we know 70% of a uh, Human flesh is water. And in that water there is air, oxygen, the breath of life. And then in that we have the blood. And the blood is where we have the soul. Now think about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. And do you remember when Jesus rose from the dead? And he told uh, Doubting Thomas, touch me, see, a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Why did Jesus not talk about blood? Because the blood had been shed out. And I think the spirit transforms the soul into the new body, into the new glorified body. So that could have been the sense how... Adam and Eve, probably they never, they never had blood before they sinned. And that the exact kind of body, same kind of body which Jesus had when he rose from the dead, flesh and bones. And it's not just the, this flesh that we have, but the new glorified flesh and bones without blood. Because the soul was already glorified into a body. Are you getting the point here? Do you remember the Bible? Paul said that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven, of God. Flesh and blood. Why? Because blood, it means the soul is there and is not yet transformed. And flesh meaning this, this body of the sins. So it is only the soul which is transformed into a glorified body. Are you getting the point here? Are you seeing what I'm saying? Now, let me let me blow your mind with one one more verse here. Think about uh 1 John uh, chapter 5 uh, verse uh, 6. Okay? Look at this. 1 John 5:6. Look at what the Bible what Bible says here. This is talking about Jesus, okay? It's saying, "This is he that came by water and blood." Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. It is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. Now, mark these things here. He came by water. Uh -huh. He had the spirit. I, like I told you, the water is where we have the oxygen, the breath, the breath of life. Okay, 
So he came by having a clean water, clean breath of life. And also he had blood. Are you seeing this one? He had the spirit which is alive. He had blood which makes him to be a human being because all human beings, they have blood, meaning that is where the soul is. Are you getting the point? So he came by spirit, uh, 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 the blood. Is it making some sense here to you? That's why we can say Jesus was both God and man. And then it says, not by water only, but by water and blood. Trying to say, he did not come just like God only. He came like God and also like man. A sinful, uh, I'm not saying Jesus was a sinner, but in the nature of a sinful man. The way a sinful man is like with blood, all right? And the Bible says, it is the spirit that bears witness. It is what? The water that bears witness. Because in the water is where we have air, oxygen. Because the spirit is truth. Remember in the Garden of Eden, what was lost is what? The spirit was lost. But Jesus came with the spirit. And the soul in the blood. And the flesh. Are you getting the point here? So Jesus came with the three. His spirit was alive. His soul was alive. His flesh was alive. So when he died in the flesh, then the spirit which was in him quickened his soul. You get the point? He quickened his soul into a new glorified body. Are you seeing the point here? Into a new glorified body. That's why when we get saved, we get that spirit. We get that water. It's like Jesus tells us, now because you're my friends, I'm going to give you a part of that spirit that I have. A part of that water that I have. Look at verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. Are you seeing this one? So the spirit, the water, and the blood have to be together. All right? Now, let's take this picture of Jesus here as a wind up for just a minute. It seems when Jesus came, you see, after Adam sinned and all his descendants were like him because the Bible tells us in Genesis 5, 3, I don't want to go there, that Adam lived 130 years and begot uh, a son in his own image and his own likeness and called his name Seth. So every person born after Adam is after the image of a sin, a fallen nature of man. And we understand that when Adam sinned, his spirit died. So he had two out of three parts. And if you d divide two out of three parts, you get point six, six, and six. That's the nature of man. And it's also the number of man. Could it be that is the nature of the fallen man? And now when you get saved, you get a piece of Jesus, of the spirit that he rose with. That is the Holy Spirit who, who will quicken your mortal bodies when you die. If you die without the spirit, I think the spirit is like air. It's like, a, think about a, a, a ball, a football. And that football has three parts. There is the air inside, there is the tube inside, and there is the outer skin. So what died in us, it was the air which is inside the ball. The tube and the outer skin, they are still there. But a time will reach, because there is no air, then that ball is going to decay, and the outer skin is going to die. But the inner one will not die. It will live forever, but it will be in a way that it cannot be used. And that, of course, will mean 
you cannot be of any use in the kingdom, so you'll be thrown to hell. But if you have air, which is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, then when the outer cover dies, which is your body, then the air is going to quicken the inner cover and make it glorified. Quicken your soul and glorify it into the image that Jesus had. And that's why Jesus could tell Doubting Thomas, touch here, flesh and bones. This is me, flesh and bones. I'm not a spirit. Exactly the same words which were spoken by Adam when he was given Eve in the Garden of Eden when before they sinned. He said, this is my flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. He didn't talk about blood. And if Satan right now wants to destroy, what do you think is going to destroy? He's after your soul. He's after your blood. That's why you see what is happening right now. Right now. When you get that thing inside your body and uh, it goes to the blood through the your your veins your your veins what's going to happen it's going to mess you up like you've never thought that's why people are getting clotting why clotting why clotting my friends because satan is dealing with your soul he wants a part of your soul and i believe that's why jesus told us we have to make a choice. We cannot serve God and mammon. We'll have to make a choice. The Bible said, when you take the mark of the beast, you cannot be saved. Why? Because your soul is tampered with. This is the book of life. Inside. Your DNA is where we have the book of life. Not the book of life that is Jesus, because that's the main book of life is Jesus. Life is Jesus. Eh? But there, there is another book, which is your book, where everything is recorded and written of yours. And that book, right now, people have discovered how they can read that book. People can read Your DNA can be read right now. You get the point? So if you tamper with that book, which has your information, because God is recording every day what you're doing. Do you want to know what the Bible says if you tamper with that book? Okay. Okay. In the book of Revelation, I just want to finish up with this. Please bear with me. Look at this. Look at this. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 18, you know, many people can say, oh, this is just talking about the book of Revelation. No, the Bible can use one sentence to mean many things. Look it in the aspect of your book, your DNA. All right? Look it in that aspect. The Bible says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Which book could he be talking about? Remember, just before I continue, God told Jeremiah that these people, their hearts are like stone, but one day I will write my laws into their hearts. I will give them a new heart which is a heart of flesh, and I will write my laws in their hearts. Where is he writing? Where is he writing these things? In your body, in your DNA, in your book. I'll come to Jeremiah's story in just a bit. If any man shall add unto these things, 
If you will add something to your DNA, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Who knows inside your DNA there is some plagues which are written there. Penalties which are written there in the books. If you read the whole strain of DNA is about 3 billion codes or something. There's a lot of stuff. Nobody has been able to read all of it. It's only read by machines. Look at verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city from the things which are written in this book. Friends, do you see why the, it's really important to protect your book? And not to take the mark of the beast. You take the mark, you're doomed. You add anything to what God has already written, you're doomed. You remove, you're doomed. Because you're no longer human. You become something else. God has coded each and every one of us uniquely. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. He says that even the air in our body, he knows every one of them. He's, he has the record. So how are you going to wake up and say, I'm going to add something or remove something for the sake of this or this or this? Are you seeing? The devil is about to tamper with that book. Do not let him mess you up. The Bible is clear. Let me just stop there. I don't want to add so many things. Let me just stop it there. God bless you.